We're going to be talking about a few terms today in regards to the um, post-Civil War South. So post means after, so after the Civil War, after Reconstruction fails in the South, um, and the government kind of just pulls out and lets the South do pretty much whatever they want for quite a long time. Um, so what we get here is the African Americans are freed, but we understand that they have the resources being newly freed and never having any type of property or money or education before that. And now the people who used to be in charge of the South end up getting their power back. And so things start to go back to the way we were. they were. So we've kind of been talking about all that. Um, the term that I want to talk about today is disenfranchisement. Um, disenfranchisement is denying people the rights that they're supposed to have. So the 14th and 15th Amendments were passed, which gave African-American citizenship and voting rights. And voting rights, we learned during the first part of Reconstruction, were very powerful for African-Americans because they were able to vote and elect leaders who would work for them. And there were many African-American leaders who were voted into state and local politics. Um, became representatives, became senators, and all sorts of stuff like that. But then we get to the point where the protection to these newly free slaves is taken out of the South. And what happens? Basically what happens is disenfranchisement. Those rights that they're supposed to have are getting taken away, specifically their voting rights, because your voting rights is your voice, right? So they start to make all these requirements on how you will be able to vote. And they make them specifically to keep slaves from voting. So, for example, you can vote if your grandfather could vote. Well, if your grandfather was a slave, and chances were in the 1880s in America, in the South, he was. And even if he wasn't, they wouldn't have allowed you to vote anyway. So, yeah, like, you're not going to be able to vote. Um, literacy tests. So literacy, can you read and write? They would give you a test before you voted. You know, you might think, well, you should be able to read and write if you can vote. But we're talking about former slaves who weren't given an education and who now have just started going to school and are working hard to learn to read and write. And so that requirement keeps them from being able to vote. Um, poll taxes. Basically, if you wanted to vote, you had to pay a tax. So all these things were put into place specifically because they knew that these laws would mostly affect African Americans. Interestingly enough, a lot of these laws affected poor whites as well. And in the South, around the early 1900s, about 29% of the population was voting, compared to the North, where over 60% of the population was voting. So the rich white Southerners in power didn't mind also if, as a result of this, some of the poor white southerners weren't able to vote either. So taking away voting rights takes away your voice. And then if your voice is taken away and you can't vote, then laws are going to get passed that um, are not going to be in your favor. Okay, And you, if you can't vote, you have no way to, to fight those laws. And some of the people might have still been able to do these things. They might have still been able to pay the poll tax. They might have learned enough reading and writing, although the grandfather thing, being able to vote, I don't know about that. But they enough of them could have possibly registered to vote, and they did still try to register to vote. So when those things didn't stop them from voting, they used things like violence, fear, um, groups like the KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. Um, they threatened people. They might shoot at your house at night. They all sorts of tactics to scare Af African American voters away from the polls. And so, what, if we were to fast forward and to talk about people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Rosa Parks and the things that they fought against, they fought against what was called segregation. So, segregation starts in this time period this idea that people are separate, okay? that you can keep the blacks and the whites separate and that's okay. And you can see how it's going to be easy to pass these laws if you're not allowing any African Americans to vote. And the only people voting 
are the rich white people who used to be in charge before the Civil War. So you can kind of see this starts way, way back in the 1800s, and it goes all the way in some places until the 1970s. And just so you think that the 1970s is not 100 years ago, I was born in 1978, okay? That doesn't mean I'm a million years old. But just to give you a perspective, some of these laws didn't, end until even around the time that I would have been born. So that's kind of crazy if you think about it that way, that when your potentially your grandparents were alive, that these kinds of things might have still been happening. They would have been happening when my parents were alive and my grandparents. Um, so in civil rights leaders worked all the time to try to fix these problems, but there was just so much prejudice and uh, racism that they couldn't get through that. And that's even in the North as well. Um, it's just interesting in this time period, there's one of my favorite civil rights activists, and her name is Ida B. Wells. And she, um, one of the things that she was famous for is Rosa Parks was famous for not moving her seat on the bus, and then they fought against bus segregation. Um, Ida B. Wells went to court to fight against her being denied a place on the train. Okay, so trains, buses. Um, and she paid for a first class seat and wasn't allowed to sit there. And so she went to court and she won. But when she got to federal court, her case um, was lost. And this is also right after that, the Supreme Court decided that it was okay to have separate segregated um, train cars. And kind of once that was the Supreme Court said okay, then segregation, boom, was like, you know, okay, we're segregating restaurants, we're going to segregate in public places, we're going to segregate in bathrooms, we're going to segregate in schools, and this whole idea of separate but equal came up. But, of course, it was not, it was separate, but it was not equal um, in any sense of the word. And so this is kind of where all this stuff comes out of is this time period. And you have a lot of oppression um, to keep, the African-Americans from doing anything about it, a lot of fear. I mean, imagine it's going to be hard to fight back if you are worried that your family members could die because you decided to go vote. So, but, you know, it doesn't stop lots and lots and lots and lots of people for um, fighting for freedom uh, all the way up until currently.